सो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू स्टूडेंट्स माई वॉइस इज ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड स्क्रीन इज विजिबल प्रॉपरली सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी शैल डिस्कस हाउ टू डिटरमाइन द इफेक्टिव डेप्थ इन केस ऑफ वन वे स्लैब्स एंड हाउ to determine the effective span in case of one way slabs so we shall focus today on these two aspects in my previous lectures i have uh, in detail discuss about how to determine uh, how to determine that which type of slab designer should go for design so aspect ratio if it is greater than equal to 2 all the details has been discussed in my previous lecture so let us start with how to determine the effective depth in one way slabs so please refer is 456 2000 page number 38 figure 4 so let's have a look at this so this is page number 38 is 456 2000 and this is the figure so if you will look at this graph on x axis percentage tension reinforcement is given on y axis modification factor is given and few curves these five curves are drawn fs equal to 120 fs equal to 145 fs equal to 190 fs equal to 240 fs equal to 290 it is uh, given here now here it is mentioned that fs i still stress of service loads in newton per mm square so these values 120 145 this is uh, these values are in newton per millimeter square now we have seen that fy stands for the yield strength of steel in case of fe 250 mild steel fy is equal to 250 newtons per mm square if if it is hysd steel fe 415 or fe 500 the yield strength is 415 newton per mm square 500 newtons per mm square that we have seen now what exactly fs and how to calculate fs you please see here fs equals to 0.58 fy area of cross section of steel required upon area of cross section of steel provided you already know the difference between steel required and steel provided still required if you have calculated this much load is coming on slab and the required steel is suppose 300 mm square when you actually calculate 300 mm square divided by you have decided to use 12 mm dia bars then 300 mm square divided by area of each bar and actually still you will provide using 12 mm dia bars so provided steel will be obviously slightly more than that of the steel required and that is good practice also so this ratio is to be multiplied with 0.58 fy you will get the value of fs so initially in order to determine the effective depth we don't know the area of the steel required so we cannot provide the steel also so initially assume that the area of the steel required and area of steel provided is same so if we will assume this then obviously this ratio will be equal to 1 so finally fs will be equal to 0.58 times f1 now fs i am writing here fs will be equal to 0.58 times fy
generally high yield strength deform bars are used fe415 is mostly used or fe500 may be used suppose in this case if fe415 is used then fy value the yield strength will be 415 newtons per millimeter square so you just try to calculate 0.58 multiplied by 415 you will get 240.7 everyone is getting the same value please calculate 240.7 newtons per millimeter square now let us have a look at this graph you have this curve 240 so you have to use this curve to determine the effective depth in one way slab for that there is equation very simple equation actually length or you may call it as span divided by span divided by effective depth is equal to 20 multiplied by modification factor modification factor i am abbreviating it as an mf so this is the span now if you will see here in is code of practice you have this curve available with you which you are using now fs equal to 240 now if you are using this curve right on x axis there is percentage tension reinforcement you have to assume the percentage tension reinforcement for one way slab in the range 0.3 2.6% so if you are using these assumptions i am making purely on the basis of is 456 so you have to assume the percentage steel reinforcement in the range for one way slab i am talking about a 0.3 to 0.6% now see here <coughs> see here let me search my marker hmm. if you will observe here i have already mentioned here you have to assume in between 0.3% to 0.6% the percentage tension reinforcement for one way slab now you see suppose let us take example that i am assuming 0.4% right steel reinforcement and 0.58 fy equal to fs i have already calculated it is 240 so definitely i will use this curve now at 0.4% which i have assumed the value try to see the modification factor from this graph right now it's 1.2 it's 1.6 so obviously it will be 1.4 so it is slightly less than 1.4 and so you are getting the modification factor as 1.38 or 1.39 in this way modify modification factor you have obtained from page number 38 as suppose 1.39 so 20 multiplied by 1.39 you please calculate you may get 27.8 
so this 27.8 is a unitless parameter and if you will multiply it by effective depth small d and remember one thing in case of beams also we are using the same abbreviation there also effective depth small d for beams here also one way slab effective depth is small d and this is your span now suppose this one way slab panel is of size 3 meters by 6.5 meters shorter span is 3 meters and longer span is 6.5 meters so as we are providing the main reinforcement along the shorter span so can anyone tell me what will be the value of l here please anyone no so as we are providing the main reinforcement along the short span in one way slab panel so the span here will be 3 meters span here will be 3 meters 3 meters means 3000 millimeters and if you will divide 3000 by 27.8 you will get the effective depth so in this case if you will calculate you will get 125.63 millimeters so if your effective depth is 125.63 right you have to now add to the effective depth you have to add the effective cover so when you will add effective cover to the effective depth you will get the overall depth of the one way slab in practice in most of the cases you will get the overall depth of one way slab in the range 100 mm to 125 130 35 mm 4 inch up to 5 5.5 6 5 6 but if it is a uh, depth is coming more then we have to design for two way slabs then the next is how to determine the effective span so is code of practice you please see this figure is code of practice has given two recommendations this slab is supported on either brick wall or on cal columns so this is the clear span inner to inner length from the supports to one way slab this is clear span and the distance between the center to center of the supports supporting one way slab is effective span i have abbreviated here es effective span cs clear span l subscript cs that is a clear span length or uh, this is the effective span length so is code of practice has given two recommendations for effective span first is clear span whatever you have got this this is clear span plus effective depth effective depth how to calculate i have explained you and from here you know how to calculate the effective depth and the second is center to center distance of the supports so this is center to center distance so out of these two values you will get some value here you will get other value here out of these whichever is less note this well most important question for gate objectives 
whichever value is less you have to fix that value as effective span so effective span in most of the textbooks you will see such types of abbreviations l effective so effective span is clear span plus depth effective depth or center to center distance this is the center to center distance whichever the less value is there you have to consider it as effective span so in this way today we have seen how to determine the effective depth and effective span length in case of one way slab so i think you might have enjoyed this lecture and in my next class i shall explain how to determine the steel reinforcement to design one way slabs thank you students thank you